use of transgender pronouns. Part of why I did it was that it was a bad habit from being a gay rights activist. Yeah. Okay. But I rationalized it by saying, if I can meet people where they are and just kind of respect their, you know, their fictional self, yeah. I can at least have a second conversation and a third conversation. And you use someone's pronouns or a name or encourage them to cross dress. Mm -hmm. That is social transitioning that really muddies the water about all the other comorbidities that mm -hmm. they might have had that would lead them to this disorder in the first place. Yeah. And so I make a distinction between the medical diagnosis of gender dysphoria mm -hmm. and but the you, social so you, contagion yes. of transgenderism. The people who are leading the conversation in being rational human beings who know what a logical equivalency is and isn't yeah. and don't want to be hoodwinked by idiots, uh -huh. All of those people are unbelievers. Right. And what you have in broad evangelicalism are the Preston Sprinkles mm -hmm. waving the flag of, you know, here's my, you know, trans asterisk, you know, Christian who shows me the better way. And you're like, yeah. no, this is not only a violation of the ninth commandment, yeah. it is hating your neighbor. It is mm -hmm. putting them in a dangerous place. Gender dysphoria is, its medical analog is anorexia. Mm -hmm. No one affirms your 14 year old daughter's anorexic self delusion. Yeah, you're right, you are really fat. Yeah, you know, I'm saying yeah that too, nobody, I and nobody thinks that a sticker yeah. in a parade will solve her problems. Right. And so we have been hoodwinked, we in the evangelical church, to instead of leading the world and helping people be victorious and be emancipated mm -hmm. from the world, the flesh and the devil as transgenderism and homosexuality are. Instead, we somehow think that making the church more gay and trans is going to help people out and that's nuts. And so, but I wanted to mark it as repentance. So the Ref 21 article, like the book, marks okay. it as repentance, not just I've learned. <clears throat> not just I've learned. I'm that's enlightened, right. you know, I, I, that's cheap. Yeah. It's really, and it's, and it's, it, it does not give glory to God. And they're, they're not mutually exclusive. You can say, oh, yeah. I learned right. that I was in sin, the right. way I was thinking and talking <laughs> right. about these things. And, and if you're a good leader and you have your people's trust, right. when you say those things, all that's going to do is earn more trust. Whereas <laughs> when, when you withhold and you play kind of fast and loose, people can smell that. People can... I think maybe not the broad masses, yeah, but a lot of people can. And I would say, who cares? Well, I, if it's right, look like, what it, what happened to Aiken? Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, you know, Joshua came and said, "Give glory to God," and the death sentence had already been proclaimed. Mm. And then he repented and gave glory to God, and he was come what may, yeah, he was executed. Mm. Right. So you know, I mean, I I don't know, and I think we just have to get right back to the fact that you do it because it's. It's obedience. Amen. 